Hello everybody, I'm Remy Gallo, working at the Data Disciplinary Institute for Neuroscience in Bordeaux, along with my colleagues Carol Siré from the Centre d'Immunology de Marseille Lumini and Mathieu Ducro at the Bordeaux Imaging Center in Bordeaux, we will cover in this course the sample clearing and mounting aspect in night shift fluorescence microscopy. First, Carol will draw a large overview of the various clearing methods and protocols which have been applied for light sheet fluorescence microscopy. Then, together with Mathieu, we will give a quick overview of the techniques that exist to mount a sample on the main night sheet microscope implementation. Now, I will present you an overview on the clearing method. To image a sample in light sheet microscopy, we need cleared samples. So, first question, why do we want to make a sample transparent? Technical developments such as microscopy have improved depth imaging, but without resolving the problem entirely. What are the imaging tools today in biology? We can use MRI to observe gross anatomy, but it doesn't give us any information at the cell level. We also use classical histology with electron or confocal microscopy. These techniques use tissue sections. They are more resolutive and achieve information at cellular and molecular level. But these techniques are time-consuming, costly, and partially informative. Indeed, classical histological techniques are based on cutting the tissue into thin sections, which are stained and examined under a microscope. This is a fast and convenient approach but it only provides information at, on a small part of the available tissue and therefore does not properly represent its complexity and heterogeneity. Clearing methods combined with immunolabeling allow inspecting the anti-tissue sample. So, with tissue clearing, we can combine gross anatomy and have access at the same time at subcellular level information, and these techniques are time and cost efficient. In many biological questions, we need to observe and analyze entire organ and organism in 3D. But in terms of lighted microscopy, it's difficult because biological tissues are opaque. They are opaque due to their heterogeneous composition in lipids carbohydrates, and proteins. This heterogeneous composition is translated into a wide range of refractive indexes responsible for light scattering. And tissue pigments also participate to light diffusion. So the tissue are opaque, and the microscopic techniques are limited in depth. 10 microns for the wild field, 50 to 100 for the confocal, and 300 to 500 for the two photon. So in fact, with these techniques, we have access only, only at this white area on this coronal section. While with light sheet microscopy, we can access at the entire brain. In practice, what is tissue optical clearing? It's making opaque biological samples transparent. We know that cell components have different refractive indexes. And the aim of these techniques is to homogenize this array. This is summarized in this scheme. Light scattering in biological tissue can be reduced by removal of lipids and airway matching. We can achieve less scattering in clear sample. Here an example of an entire clear mouse F on, on an entire brain of with the spinal cord. What are the different clearing methods? We can define four different groups of clearing methods. The first one is the dehydration and delipidation method followed by error matching. This method are based on organic, sol organic solvents. The second family is the hyperhydration and delipidation method followed by error matching. 
These methods are based on hydrophilic salt. The first family is based on hydrogel embedding followed by delipidation and air-high matching. And the last one is based on based on sample immersion in an aqueous solution with high ARI. So, the first family, based on delipidation and dehydration, includes different methods, but we will focus on disco method. The first step, we have to fix the sample in periphery paraformaldehyde at 4%. It's better to perform a tracardiac perfusion with first PBS heparin and after with PFR, and post fix the organ of interest after dissection. It's also very important to use an image grade PFA to have the best screening. After this section, you have to dehydrate your sample and remove the lipids and add the clearing solution based on organic solvent, as the ABB which is a mix of benzyl alcohol and benzyl benzoate, or with DBE, D-benzyl ether. These solutions play also a role in lipids removal. They enter into the cells, and the RI of the solvent will match to that of dehydrated protein. In the free disco protocol, for the dehydration step, we commonly use tetrahydrofluorane series. At a different percentage, dichloromethane for the delipidation step and dibenzyl ether for the RI machine. Time incubation are adapted according to the sample size. All the steps of this protocol have to be done on a roller to always shake the sample and allow an homogeneous penetration of the solvent. All these solvents are toxic, so we have to manipulate under the chemic wood with the right projective equipment. In these disco methods, we have the high disco, high for immunostain. This technique was developed by Bell and collaborators on mouse embryo. They include between the fixation and the dehydration step a step of immunostaining because DISCO protocol do not preserve the endogenous fluorescence of proteins. Same here, René and collaborator propose an optimization of this IDISCO to improve the ratio signal to noise and to achieve deepest tissue penetration. To do so, they use methanol to improve immunolabeling and antibody diffusion. But be careful, sometimes methanol can be deleterious for your antibody. This optimization also uses hydrogen peroxide to reduce tissue autofluorescence. Here, you have the optim optimized protocol for IDISCO with this step of proteinant with methanol. It's first a methanol series 20% to 100%, after it's an incubation with DCM, and a treatment with H2O2 to bleach the sample, and another methanol series from 100% to 20%, and PBS to rehydrate your sample. So if you want to do this treatment, you have to be sure that your antibodies are resistant to methanol. These steps improve the clearing and your staining and also decrease the tissue autofluorescence. Now it's immunolabeling itself with permeabilization, blocking like in normal immunofluorescence and antibody incubation. And is the time incubation, and like in this table, you have to adapt the time incubation to the sample size. And final step with a clearing, dehydration in tetrahydrofluran, delipidation in dichloromethane, and RI matching in DBE. The DBE can also participate to a delipidation. 
here. This is a video of an half brain stained with a Nidisco protocol. You can observe on this video a red marker, a marker of a perivascular macrophages, like the one. We also have in the lab homemade protocol based on the ABB query for a small organism like mouse embryo from E11.5 to E16.5 with the same kind of step. First fixation but softer at 0.4% by immersion, the immunolabeling at 4 degrees and the curing step. So dehydration with methanol, delipidation, and RI matching with baby. And we have here an example of an embryo stained with this protocol. This is a maximal projection of an embryo at E13.5, stained with an anti-CD31 for the blood vessel, beta tubulin for the nerves, CD4 for the LGL cells, and lively one for the endothelial lymphatic cell. With this protocol, we also stain small organs like payer patches. And here we have a video of mouse payer patches stained with an anti collagen 4, an anti 6 fusel 1, an anti CD4 and anti case 67. To summarize the advantages and the drawbacks of these clearing methods based on organic solvents, we can say that these methods are quite fast, they cause a slight reversible shrinkage, tissue will harden and may become brittle. They do not preserve endogenous fluorescence and you need probably to immunolabel your molecule of interest. They require also long incubation times on a large tissue and these organic solvents are toxic. To go a little bit further with this DISCO method, we can find different variants like the U-DISCO for Ultimate DISCO. This method shrinks tissue dramatically and allows easier imaging for anti-organs and organisms. We have also the V-Disco technique. This technique allows head to choose light scanning of a transparent mice. This technique boots the signal of fluorescent protein using nanobodies. On this video, you can observe the muscles in red, bones and organs in white, and neuron in green. Wall body neuron connectivity map of an adult mouse. Axonal projection in averting the hindlands and tools. Find details of axon at the neuromuscular junctions. Axonal projections between spinal cord and muscles can be also viewed in total. Spinal cord ganglia are also visible in the naive locations. And extensive nerves and innervation to forelimbs and shoulders. And the last method developed by Zao and collaborators is the channel method. It's a new tissue 
permeabilization method to clear and deeply label all mammalian organs based on a new detergent called SHAPS. This detergent forms smaller micelles, allowing full permeabilization of aged human organs. This protocol also uses NMDA and methylvietanolamine for decolorization. And here you have an example of a human eye clear with this method. And you can appreciate the details of this eye. Sclera in cyan, suspensory ligament in purple, and iris in green. The second family of clearing method is the method based on delipidation and hyperhydration based on hydrophilic solvent. The most known is the cubic method. So first, you have to fix your sample. And the clearing here is based on urea and the detergent. Detergent for the lipid removal and urea for RI matching. Urea enters the cells and denatures the proteins and reduce finally the protein Ri, reducing the overall Ri. Here, more detail on the protocol and on the composition of reagent 1 and reagent 2. So, first, you have to perfuse your mouse with PFA and post-fix your organ in PFA 4% one day. After is the lipid removal phase with the reagent 1, one day to seven days, you have to wash, and the RI matching phase with the reagent 2, two days, and after the immersion in silicone oil before imaging. You can also immunostain your sample before the incubation with reagent 1. If you want to clear a larger sample, you have to perfuse longer and also perfuse with the reagent 1 half diluted. And after you have the same state with reagent 1 7 days and reagent 2 also 7 days before one day in the oil before the imaging. So, to summarize the advantages and the drawbacks of these clearing methods, they preserve endogenous fluorescence, but these methods make optical clearing slow for large tissue. They are more adaptive for small samples. They are cheap and low toxic. They are easy methods. No specific equipment are required they cause a slice expanding of your sample. The third group is the hydrogel embedding method. They are characterized in methods using hydrophilic compounds. So dehydration is not required. The principle consists of the partial elution of the lipids by SDS while answering the preservation of cell protein and nucleic acid content by chemical bypass. This bridging is obtained by polymerization at 37 degrees of an acrylamide-based hydrogel. For lipid elution, you can choose two different options. An active elution, more adapted for big sample, it's faster, more efficient, but also more deforming. It's done with electrophoresis in clearing solution. Or a second option with a passive elution, more adapted for small samples like embryo or zebra fish, for example. Longer but softer with tissue integrity. And it's done by immersion in clearing solution. So to summarize the advantages and the drawbacks of these clearing methods, 
We preserve endogenous fluorescence, but it can be necessary to do an immunostaining to increase the signal of a naive fluorescent. Is the second method after this group most used on large samples. They are laborious, they require a specific equipment, and you can have also minimal expansion of your sample. The last group is the simple immersion. So first, a fixation step in PFR 4%, an immunostaining step if necessary, and the sample immersion in aqueous clearing solution. In fact, the water is pulled out of the cell by osmotic pressure, and then the clearing solution enters. And the array of the clearing solution match to that of protein and lipids. So an example with a TDE solution. So with this TDE solution, you can incubate your sample in a 20% solution, 24 hours, and after 48 hours in a solution at 47%. And time incubation also depends on your sample size. So to summarize drawbacks and advantage, TD is not toxic, it's cheap, it preserves endogenous fluorescence but can impact the fluorescence intensity. It's an easy method, no specific equipment are required, and, but TD at high concentration can shrink samples. And sample immersion methods are also used for plants, like TDE, as we previously described, but TDE is here used at higher percentage between uh, 50 to 80 percent. An example of clear Arabidopsis tayana expressing different current specific fluorescence marker clear with, with uh, GD. But for plants, we can also use clear C solution. Clear C solution is a mix of fluoria, xylitol, and sodium deoxycolate. It uh, diminishes the chlorophyll autofluorescence and substitutes it with a solution of IRI in the whole plant body. The incubation time can range from four days to four weeks. Here you have an example of uh, Arabidopsis plants tissues cleared with uh, the solution clearsy and a pistil pollinated with different fluorescent pollen treated with clearsy five months. To conclude, a quick review with uh, this table on the different curing methods. So for high disco method, the final error will be 1.56, the curing will be very strong, endogenous fluorescent not preserved, and curing time for mass brain around 1 to 3 days. And the tissue will shrink, become hard and brittle. For cubic, the final array will be between 1.38 to 1.48. Clearing will be very strong, endogenous fluorescence preserved, clearing time for mouse brain two weeks around, and tissue will expand. For the clarity, the final array will be 1.45. Clearing will be very strong also, endogenous fluorescence preserved. Clearing time for mass brain between two and four weeks and tissue will expand a little bit. And for immersion solution, for a clear solution, the final error will be 1.44. Clearing will be medium weak. Endogenous fluorescence preserved. Clearing time for mass brain between two and three days and tissue 
and jiggly jiggly merchant. So to find the best screwing method for your sample, you have to consider all these parameters. And you can find on these two last slides the references. Thank you for your attention. After this nice overview on sample claiming protocols, we would like now to present the most common way to mount the samples for the most widely used light sheet microscope implementation. We decided to discuss sample mounting strategies in your training as we feel this is a critical step in most light sheet microscopes, very specific to this kind of microscope as compared to other imaging modalities. Obviously, the sample mounting strategy will strongly depend on the sample itself, depending on its size, if it is live or fixed, or if it requires a specific orientation, and so on. It will also depend on the microscope itself. Actually, most light sheet microscopes are constructed around the samples, and thus can image only a limited variety of samples. To our knowledge, there is no universal light sheet microscope able to handle any samples. As a consequence, each light sheet microscope presents a specific illumination and detection geometry, and objective type that depend on the type of samples we want to image. Here you can see some of the most classic microscope configurations and associated sample mounting strategies. The ultra microscope geometry is dedicated to image very large samples up to several millimeters wide. In this case, the samples are immersed in a cuvette with horizontal illumination sheets and vertical detections. The classic multi-objective spin with excitation and detection objective in the horizontal plane. Here the sample is held vertically in between the objectives. The inverted spin configurations, where the sample is mounted horizontally on a glass cover strip and the objectives are above, like in an upright microscope geometry. And finally, the oblique spin that use a single, generally high numerical aperture objective and illuminate the samples mounted horizontally onto a glass cover strip. In the center, or let's say classic spin configuration, the sample is held vertically and the objectives are in the horizontal plane. It exits geometry with two, three, or even four objectives depending on the optical excitation and detection scheme complexity. Here, the sample is located in a transparent cuvette, typically filled with an aqueous medium. It usually allows to control the temperature, the CO2, and media inside this cuvette for live imaging. One can also adapt the refractive index of the imaging media inside the cuvette according to the sample preparations that have been made, typically for imaging clear samples. In this geometry, the samples can be either embedded in a gel, hung by a hook, or within a container, or fixed to a cover strip that is held vertically. And the sample mounting should enable rotations around the vertical axis in order to image them from several directions. In this case, several stacks are typically acquired and then fused to reduce shadowing effects, improve the spatial resolutions, and increase the overall field of view. Many embedding strategies exist that depend on the sample size, motility, and requirement for keeping them alive. We can, for example, use syringes whose extremity is cut away or capillary to create a tubular container in which the samples will be embedded into the jets according to the sample size to image. Then, various ways to embed the samples onto the gel exist, from sample aspiration to the creation of a tiny hole inside the gel to other samples. An example of an embedding procedure is presented in our practical demonstration of the new VSPIM microscope by Sylvain de Rossi. The most critical point here is to avoid any index mismatch between the embedding gel and the immersion media. Low melting agarose is for example used most of the time because it's at the same index of refraction than water. One also needs to be particularly vigilant on the quality of the gels used as any dust or inhomogeneity will be seen under the microscope and will deteriorate the imaging quality. Larger samples, like wall organ, can be suspended either with a hook or glued or aspirated or deposited onto a support and then insert into the cuvette in between the objective. To limit the sample displacement, it is sometimes necessary to mount it in a closed chamber. And again, many possibilities exist to create such chamber. Of course, the wall of the chamber should have the same index of refraction as the external media in order to prevent any distortions at the excitation and detection sites. And specific or more solid container can also be realized according to the sample using index match polymer such as the fluoropolymer FPE or PFTE, which are the most commonly used one. 
For mounting large field samples like anti organs or small animals, special designs are often necessary and be provided by the microscope supplier if a commercial solution is used. For this sample size, the ultramicroscope geometry is the most convenient one as we can use large cuvettes to host our samples. Depending on the clearing method, samples can be brittle or very soft and thus can be hard to manipulate and to stabilize. They are usually pinched into a dedicated support which is then positioned in the acquisition chamber of the microscope. You can watch an example of such mounting strategy in the ultra microscope demonstrations by Carol Siray and Mathieu Fallet. Finally, samples can be mounted on a cover slip as in a more standard fluorescence microscope techniques. In this case, samples are mostly small in the range of few tens of micrometers, such as single cells, small organoids, or tissue slices. They can be imaged on single objective implementation, such as the oblique plane microscope and scape system. Here, the microscope geometry is even compatible with the multi well plates format, opening the door to the parallelization of the acquisition process. This is really an important feature of single objective SPIM, as sample mounting and more standard multi objective lighting microscope implementations is usually complex and not parallelizable at all. Light sheet mm, configuration with both objectives in the vertical plane, such as the DEI SPIM and the lattice light sheet microscope, also use these cover slip mounted samples. You can find a demonstration of such sample imaging for the Mariana DEI SPIM from 3i and the lattice light sheet microscope in the practical demonstrations. Lastly, other more confidential light sheet configurations has been proposed to be used with cover slip mounted samples. With that, I would like to acknowledge all the people involved in the France Bioimaging Working Group on Nightshade Microscopy Techniques, and of course, I would like to thank you for your attention. See you at the question and answer session.